Right, we're talking about this again, which is the, well, it's a cardboard model of the handheld. And as you can see, I made a much nicer um, cardboard assist design thing with my laser cutter. And this is, it It feels really, really good to hold it in hand and all the buttons are easily accessible and the screen is nice. And one additional thing is, I think I want to put the speaker on the back of the unit because I chose a relatively large speaker and I just simply do not have the room to put it in front because the display panel is going to overhang this a little. So there's really not all that much room here or here. One additional thing that we haven't talked about before is I think I'd like to put a status LED somewhere. Probably up here, which would make it look a lot like a bigger Game Boy Advance, but maybe over here. Or, yeah, this I think this is the only option to have it here or there. I don't want to have it down here where you're covered with your hands and it would look really odd. Maybe in the middle or down here, but this would also be probably a bad choice for aesthetic reasons. So, the LEDs I bought are these here. These are 3528 LEDs and they're RGB without any sort of fancy controller or stuff in them. Um, these are not uh, addressable LEDs that uh, everybody seems to use right now. I also have a roll of these somewhere here. These would be these would look something like this. They're also much larger and I don't need that because we already have a really powerful processor on this thing. So we we could easily just control a couple LED lines from within the controller. Also I don't want to do any fancy sort of animation stuff. I uh want to do well red green and blue and also probably one or two colors in addition to that i think we could do violet or cyan or yellow or something like that um just to indicate difference dif differences in in status of the handheld itself for example, we could use red for the battery is low and green for the battery is fully charged and blue for the battery is charging and then we could use something else for something. And what I think is that this would serve as a really, really nice introduction to the processor and the um, tool chain and everything that I'm using. This is sort of a, well, it's an advanced blink so, I think this is the first um, thing I'm going to do on the actual controller. And for that, I made a little breakout board, which just has the LED and a couple of resistors on there. These are common anode LEDs, which means that we have to pull the line low to get the LED to light up. And we'll look at that in the code. And for now, because I haven't decided on the processor itself... Um, or figured out how you actually program these. We're going to use the dev board and we're going to work from there. This is an uh, F103RB nuclear board and this is just a pinout that I chose. It's uh, powered from the 3.3 volt rail. Uh, it's basically all about that. And what it does if I plug it in to power here is just it flashed the LED different colors this doesn't look as good on camera as it does in person but yeah this works relatively well so I think it's time we go to the um, IDE and look at the actual code. 
as sort of a simple example on how to how to do this. All right, so we'll start in the STM32 Cube IDE, and we start on the um, device pinout and configuration window. This is running on my Windows machine. You could also run this on Linux. I personally couldn't get it to work, which is a little bit annoying to me because I like to keep the programming side of things on the Linux machine and the CAD and 3D printing and that sort of stuff I usually have on the Windows machine. So it breaks my workflow just a little bit, but um, I can easily deal with that. So, um, but there shouldn't be much of a difference uh, if you're using the Linux or the Windows version. I think it should be virtually identical. I, at least I hope it is. Except for that the Windows version just works on my machine and the Linux version doesn't on the Linux machine. But yeah, so I'm not going to go into how to set up the project. There is a lot of videos out there that have much higher production value and they go really into the details and they have people that actually know a lot about the tools and they can tell you all about how to get your project set up. Um, I personally watched the uh, DigiKey series, I think it's called Getting Started with FT uh, STM32, and that was a real big help in getting this to work initially. So I'll start with my project already pre-configured. This one is called, the project is called SpyBus for uh, the reason that I, I started trying to get the display to work with, with SPI, but uh, then I decided I probably need to go into um, actually learning how the IDE and the chip and the language and everything works before I go into doing SPI sort of things. So let's just a look at the pinout here and you can see I've got the SPI down here this I'm not using it at the moment but it's configured to SPI and I have these pins here PA9 PA8 and PB10 these are the ones that were that are actually going to concern us right now and these over here all of these are pre-configured from the dev board I'm using so this would be a little different um, on the on the actual handheld because we wouldn't have all these uh, pre-configured things. So I'll just go into the main.c and after all the configuration code up here, we go into the main and down here in the while loop below the common guards. You can see that I have some stuff for, for SPI down here, but I'm not using it at the moment. And then I have a, a couple of functions. What I did here is I wrote functions to um, basically automate things as, as much as I can. So that I in the in the main code I just have to say LED I want to turn the blue LED on and will do everything uh, by itself, which is it will first of all pull all the pins high, so um, none of the uh, RGB LEDs components are on because you have to remember it's a common anode LED, so if the pin connected to it is is high, it's not going to light up. If we pull it low, which we do here in the next bit, um, you can see we're, we're pulling GPIO pin 8 low, which is the blue LED pin, and we're leaving the other two ones high, um, which isn't really necessary here because we already have them high. This is just an artifact from um, what I was doing earlier. So the LED green is just the same and the red is also the same. The LED violet is just a little bit different in that we have to activate two pins. And um, in this example, it is red and 
blue we're pulling high and then we get violet and for the for the blue we're doing the same with um, these two and then the thing that we're doing is just we're, we're calling these functions then we're waiting for for one and a half seconds then we're calling the next and that's how we get to our blinky sort of pattern that we saw earlier so um, this this is certainly a way to do it you could also um, do the pin toggling from the hell library but I just uh, used this which is fairly similar to the way you would do it in um, in AVRC um, so it comes a little more familiar to me than the hell library which I'm also going to use a lot for the for the SPI and that sort of thing but yeah this is the this is all I've done on the on the code side so far. Um, more is to come. I'm starting to get really into that right now, and I'm learning a lot at the moment. And yeah, it's fun. I think next thing will be either getting some display code or getting some SD card code running. We'll see uh, what I can figure out first. I think the display is probably going to be a little bit harder than the SD card, so I'll probably do the SD card first. So yeah, that's about it. Um, bye for now, and I'll see you around.